coming up from the Northeast Live Studios in Guwahati. Northeast tonight with Wasbi Hussain. Welcome to Notice Tonight, the show that decodes the region. It took nearly a fortnight for hundreds of men and machines in both Manipur and Nagaland to bring the forest fire in the picturesque Zuko Valley under control. While local villagers and personnel of the NDRF and the SDRF battled the blaze on the ground, the Indian Air Force helicopters rose to the occasion, spraying water from the skies in a complicated operation to control the fire. The fire in the mesmerizing valley perched at an altitude of around 2,400 meters or about 8,000 feet above sea level had damaged hundreds of acres of hilltop grassland that boasts of the famous Juku lily and of course the blights Tragopan, a highly endangered and vulnerable species. In fact, the blight Tragopan is a species that is the state bird of Nagaland. Since the Juku Valley straddles the borders of Nagaland and Manipur, a joint strategy or a joint standard operating procedure is perhaps necessary as soon as possible to prevent similar kind of disasters in the future. Several questions arise. What steps can the two state governments take to prevent similar fires in the future? Is it a good idea to train and sensitize local villagers in the region in firefighting as they could well be the first responders in the event of another similar disaster? Is a detailed assessment of the damage necessary by experts? Can access to the valley be improved. To discuss the issue, I will soon be joined from Imphal by Manipur Chief Minister Mr. N. Biren Singh. Also in Imphal, I have Dr. Loko Puni, Principal Chief Conservator of Forest of Manipur. I am also joined from Imphal by Professor P. Kumar Singh, Professor in the Life Sciences Department of Manipur University. From Nagaland, capital Kohima, I am joined by Mr. Medo Yoka advisor to the chief minister, Mr. Nephew Rio. I'm also joined from Kohima by Mr. Johnny Rongmei, officer on special duty in the Nagaland State Disaster Management Authority. And also in Kohima, I have Mr. David Solo, president Nagaland Tourism Association. Gentlemen, welcome to Notice tonight. Uh, I am now joined, of course, before beginning the discussion, let's go straight to Imphal from where I'm joined by Mr. N. Biren Singh, the Chief Minister of Manipur. Uh, Mr. N. Biren Singh, welcome to Notice tonight. Thank you very much for taking time out. Thank you, Vajbir. Uh, Mr. Biren Singh, do you have a preliminary assessment of the damage caused by the wildfire in the Zuku Valley. I know that you'll be, of course, talking of the damage in the Manipur side. Mr. Chief Minister. Uh, Vasbirji, yeah, exactly. It's just uh, my teams, the forest department led by the one therefore went there and the uh, physical assessment has been done. And uh, it is around, uh, you know, the around 450, 500 acres were damaged. But fortunately, there is no loss of life. And uh, uh, just the, we cannot find any casualty on wild animal also. Uh, but some part where we cannot uh, go into inside. Right. But we can assess uh, from the top of the hills. So that is the present assessment. But many jungle, thick jungle were not affected, but few grassy areas, widely 
Demis and the Brun. These are the uh, few things which I got till now. Okay. Uh, you know, are you going to engage wildlife experts, you know, to see the damage to the flora and fauna? Uh, because Zuko is famous for the Juko lily and the Blight's tragopan. You know, so uh, Birenji, are you going to engage wildlife experts to assess the exact damage? Uh, exactly, exactly, uh, Vaspirji, just you know the uh, Juko is a tourist place for both Nagaland and Manipur. We are sharing together and uh, we have to take care of it uh, in future, uh, for future also. But as of now, the DMAs assessed by the DFO has, uh, uh, along with the uh, expert of the or, uh, you know, wildlife teams were also there. But uh, in right of, I'm not getting right now, but I have uh, barely, uh, casually, they have submitted a report through WhatsApp to me. These are the few things, but detail, I'll get it soon. Okay. Now, have you come to the conclusion as to how the fire started? Any idea? Now, you know, I cannot uh, say it. I cannot say it why the, wild, uh, the wildfire were started from the part of the Nagaland area. But that, uh, that might be uh, how it was happened and how it, who it started, as early we cannot say. But the uh, for, fortunate part is that both Nagaland and the state government were jointly found uh, the, to douse the fire. And uh, I will, uh, once again, I would like to congratulate and thank the Honorable Union Home Minister Amit Chaji and the Central Forces, including the Indian Air Force and NDRF and uh, all agencies who involved in dousing the wildfire. Otherwise, it could have been, uh, you know, making a worse situation. Right. Uh, in the entire uh, portion of the Juko, and even it can touch the villages. Right. But fortunately, with the intervention of the central government, it has been contained. Uh, Mr. Chief Minister, what is the lesson learned after the fire? Do you think there should be a mechanism in place uh, to deal with such an emergency in the future? Definitely. Definitely what I'm planning, in the Juko Valley, just we should, uh, urgent need is to establish the availability of waters. There is a, there is a river, but uh, no uh, uh, lake, uh, like uh, pond, like uh, you know the uh, which where the we can store the waters. So we have to establish. We have to make one pond, big pond, which uh, water can be available and anytime it can be used for if anything happened like uh, this recently happened. And uh, the road permanent uh, post, permanent post of security personnel with the uh, firefighting expert has to be stationed there. Has to be stationed there. And the tracking road uh, to the inside the deep forest has to be established, has to be constructed so that if anything happens, we can go directly to the spot. Right. To that uh, route. So that kind of things we need. And even the firefighter equipment, you know, temporarily, the gas cylinder or some things, uh, we cannot use there in vehicles, but we can uh, use the, you know, uh, portable uh, gas cylinder like that. So we have to, we have to, we have to keep there. We have to uh, make some station there, I, I, I feel. So I have, I have sent my... Uh, uh, Honorable Minister uh, Diko, they are at the side to look into the matter where we can accommodate that kind of materials and equipment. Right. right. Uh, I'll not take much of your time, uh, Birenji. Uh, Mr. Chief Minister, do you think it would be a good idea to sensitize and train nearby villagers on firefighting techniques as they could be the first responders in similar situations in the future? Right, right, right. That, that, that is a good question and a good suggestion also. Uh, already uh, uh, villagers of two villages have already uh, uh, contacted with me 
One, one is from the uh, Pandung, uh, Pandung Mao, Mao Pandung, and uh, one is from the Mao proper. And uh, they are very serious and uh, they are very helpful. But they are not getting proper training, as you said. So there is uh, our office, uh, firefighter office is uh, open at uh, Senapati uh, district headquarter. I will, uh, I am planning to train them through the officials. And I will organize definitely to train the villagers. Right. So that in future, they can, they can be the first, you know, first person who uh, control the fire. Absolutely. Now, now, you had told me a few days ago that Manipur government may build a food track, food track in the Zuku Valley on the Manipur side so that emergency responders and firefighters can reach the interior parts of the valley. Uh, you see, uh, Nagaland has already established helipad inside the Zuko Valley. And uh, they have also constructed a gas house there. Uh, from our side, uh, we have already coordinated with the authority and the villager to village also, and the government to government also. Because a firefighter uh, unit has to be established in the both sides, uh, both Nagaland and uh, Manipur. Uh, our state has also have our own station there. Not that a big one, the manual. Right. Early usable, uh, portable cylinder and like that, as I told you earlier. So I jointly, it has to be done. So we have to, we have to talk, we have to sit together, both uh, firefighter departments, uh, you know, f yeah. uh, fire brigade department of the state government, Manipur and the Nagaland, we have to sit to get together. We have to sit together with the DGP to DGP and a CS to CS. And then we have to find out a concrete plan so that it can, uh, that can be avoided in the futures course. Right. Uh, my last two questions to you, Mr. Chief Minister. A similar fire occurred in Zuko in 2006. Uh, and now that has destroyed 20 kilometers of forest. That is what is there in the media reports. So this is a serious issue, isn't it? After all, Zuko is a biodiversity hotspot. Right, right, right. Uh, you know, just the government, our government uh, has already launched the Green Mission. Manipur Green Mission has already launched. Even though we appointed the ambassador, and uh, we are going on and planting trees and protecting forests in around the state. But unfortunately, this time, this Zuko, the one of the most beautiful uh, tourist place, has been. Uh, some part has been destroyed due to this wildfire. So in future, as you said, in future we have to give our uh, whatever maximum effort not to occur it again. And uh, so okay. uh, just we right. need right. give trainings to the villager mainly, to the villager because they are the immediate person. So we, we definitely we will take it up. And uh, we'll try to prevent it because global warming is uh, concerned of the, you know, the, uh, 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 the present, present situation. And the uh, state government, Manipur particularly, is, is we're trying to maintain uh, the global warming and to preserve and protect the forests and the uh, wetland and et cetera, et cetera. Right. My last question to you, uh, Mr. Chief Minister. This is my final question. Do you agree that this mesmerizing valley can be a global trekking destination? That is the hope. That is the mission. Because it is so beautiful. You have seen the, in the video. Yeah. What a beautiful place, you know. And, uh, and the people are crazy about it. So we are not uh, uh, making infrastructure properly. That is the lag behind. But this time, I assure that from the uh, state government side and as well as I think this time central government will definitely look into the matter and they will also take serious. I will seek uh, monetary help also to make it a international global tourist center.
Definitely. Absolutely, uh, Biren Singh Ji, that is what we want. Uh, you know, we from Northeast Life, we wish that we do not have to face this kind of a disaster in the coming days. And it is good to know from you that you are planning to work together with the neighboring adjoining government, state government of Nagaland together to protect the scenic and picturesque Juku Valley. Biren Singh Ji, thank you very much indeed for speaking to me on Northeast thank tonight. Thank you, Vice Ji. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you very much. Well, that was N. Biren Singh, the Chief Minister of Manipur, talking exclusively to me on Northeast tonight on uh, the Northeast Live channel. Let me go to the debate now. Let me go straight to Kohima to Mr. Medo Yoko. Medo Yoka is the advisor to the Nagaland Chief Minister, Mr. Nefurio. Uh, Mr. Medo Yoka, welcome. You have heard the Manipur Chief Minister saying that about 400 acres of grasslands in Zuko on the Manipur side have been affected. You had been personally monitoring the situation. You were in charge during the entire disaster. Uh, please tell me your experience. What is the extent of the damage on this very, very important and scenic Zuko Valley as far as Nagaland side is concerned? Yeah, good evening. Uh... And thank you for having me back into the show. I heard a statement made by the Honorable Chief Minister of Manipur and Bilin Singh on uh, giving a preliminary report of the nature and the degree of devastation that is being made by the Infernox. I would like to make it clear that uh, as per our interpretation and understanding of the issue of uh, mm -hmm. the is concerned, Mm -hmm. I have like to put it on record mm -hmm. and make it straight that there is mm -hmm. no Manipur Zuku mm -hmm. and there is no Nagaland Zuku. Mm -hmm. Here, mm -hmm. I think we are just talking of one Zuku. Mm -hmm. And as far as our perspective is mm -hmm. concerned, uh, mm -hmm. Nagaland government have already done a preliminary mm -hmm. survey, drawn their mm -hmm. survey, and the next time, the degree mm -hmm. of the damage caused by the inferno basin, inferno, mm -hmm. is being yet to be compiled and a final mm -hmm. picture and the uh, volume and the degree of the debate that is being caused is yet to be officially put up to the government. So we are awaited. But I I would like to uh, supplement to the statement given by the Honorable Chief Minister of Manipur that uh, in fact, if we have to go in detail, much large, larger, larger, more extensive damages has been, the figure that has been highlighted by the Chief Minister is it's, it's much more higher and more, more damage has been caused. Okay, uh, I, I will. I think this is a very uh, bad audio coming from Kohima. I'd like to request our crew there, uh, throw the producers who are sitting in the PCR to fix the audio with Mr. Medo Yoka. Okay, uh, let me let me go to you, Mr. Johnny uh, Rongme. Mr. Johnny Rongme, you, you led from the front. Uh, during the crisis, uh, what has been your assessment? What is the lesson learned? What actually, any idea? Have you been able to conclude as to what triggered the fire? Uh, you know, uh, let us make an opening remark from you, Mr. Uh, Johnny Rangmei. Yeah, very good evening and thank you for having me here. You know, Juku Valley is the most Preston Valley, maybe perhaps in the Northeast region, maybe even in the world. And uh, I think you have rightly pointed out that this is the hub of, you know, uh, biodiversity. You know, fire occurrences in Zuku Valley. Uh, we also had a fire uh, in Jafu near the rains, uh, similar range, during 2015. Uh, that's when we also organized, <coughs> you know, the for the first time in the history of India, using Bambi bucket uh, by the Indian Air Force. And we had another uh, Zuku fire uh, during 2018, which was contained uh, by the support of the local volunteers, especially from the South Ndangami Youth Organization, we call it Sayo. And during this uh, 2020 and 2021 fire, uh, we really did not know uh, what has caused the fire. Uh, we are still under investigation. Uh, some of the lessons learned has been uh, put into practice during this uh, uh, response to 
the 2020 fire and 2021 fire, uh, the District Disaster Management Authority of Kohima, they had activated the incident response systems, uh, wherein the response mechanism has been very, very systematic, and we could, you know, really address in a very uh, uh, challenging situation. You know, if you really look at the climate, uh, climatic condition now, there at the valley, it's a very harsh temperature. The, the, the terrain is very, very stiff. Right. There are areas where we are not able to access to. Even the chopper um, operation was very, very difficult. I myself had flew on the 3rd of uh, uh, January with the I, uh, Indian Air Force to assess the situation. Uh, some of the lessons learned that we would be the Nagaland State Disaster Management Authority, government of Nagaland, under the uh, leadership of our Honorable Chief Minister, is that we would be also looking into uh, the possibilities of setting up a telephone exchange tower. Because during emergencies, it has been a big challenge of communications. People who are in the valley are not able to communicate to the uh, control room and to the base camp, and that has uh, put us in a big challenge. So through the Nagaland State Disaster Management Authority, the government of Nagaland is going to invite the uh, telecom service provider to provide at least two, three towers there in the valley so that there is a, a smooth communication network uh, during emergencies. In fact, Nagaland uh, uh, had been experiencing this uh, uh, incidents. We also even uh, do uh, search for the lost tourists many occasions. So we also have a Google map of the entire valley, right. uh, 3D, uh, that's all, uh, almost ready. We, okay. would, uh, we would be able to releasing it to the uh, uh, public for using it. And even this forest fire, the state government had been uh, you know, okay. handling it uh, during 2015, during 2019. So with this, several, so, uh, we hope absolutely. that uh, our lessons learned will be put forward. Okay, yeah. we'll, we'll expand on that. Uh, let me take the opening remarks from the other panelists. We have got two very eminent panelists also in Imphal, but let me uh, go, before that, let me go to Mr. David Solo. David Solo is a tour operator. He's also the president of the Nagaland Tourism Association, uh, someone who has himself trekked in the Zuku Valley. Uh, David, uh, welcome to Notice tonight. Uh, tell me your experience, tell the viewers of the region and the country what it means to see a, a, a mesmerizing valley like Zuko on fire. You know, you must, this must have created a lot of trauma among the local villagers who live around Zuko. It's not just in Nagaland, it'll be in Manipur as well. I mean, as, uh, as Mr. Medo said, Zuko is Zuko. There is no Manipur Zuko, there is no Nagaland Zuko. But, but the point is, it must be a traumatic experience for the villagers. Yes, uh, hi, thank you for having me. Um, uh, it is true, uh, not only the villagers that uh, are near surrounding uh, Zuku, but I think this has been a very traumatic experience for everyone in the tourism industry, because as uh, my other panelists were saying, that Zuku Valley is uh, perhaps the most uh, visited spot in Nagaland, and it is uh, extremely important for all, um, all the uh, the, uh, the players in the tourism industry, you know, it, it forms a very important part of our uh, itinerary. Everyone who comes to Nagaland is taken to Zuku. So um, it has, it, uh, and being an extremely beautiful place, it is a really calming uh, experience to climb up to Zuku and to trek to Zuku. Yeah. So having, see, yeah, seeing the valley on fire and, you know, the lush green valley becoming black because of the fire is, is quite a traumatic experience, I must say. And um, I, I must thank the, the villagers and the, the volunteers also who have been up in the valley for for uh, weeks at, on end battling the, the fire. And hopefully, um, I think uh, from this experience, we will be able to come out a little smarter and a little stronger. Yes. Yes, in, in how to absolutely. This from this experience, very rightly said by mm -hmm. David there, that we'll be able to learn from this experience and come out a little smarter in the days ahead. Uh, let me go to Imphal, where I have Dr. Loko Puni. Dr. Loko Puni is the principal chief conservator of forest of Manipur. Uh, Dr. Loko Puni, you know the area very well. 
what are some of the measures, according to you, that needs to be urgently drawn up? Because the Chief Minister of Manipur has been saying that the two states need to work together. There has to be some coordinated mechanism to prevent this kind of a disaster in the future. So what are some of your recommendations? What do you think about the latest incident? Yeah, thank you uh, uh, for uh, letting me join in the Northeast live. Uh, in the first place, uh, let us talk about the importance of uh, Zuko Valley and the surrounding areas. The Zuko Valley, which is situated at uh, 2,438 meters above mean sea level, and the surrounding areas like uh, Mount Isse, that is uh, 2,994 meters, and also the surrounding areas rich in forests, especially the virgin forest. So this uh, small area, in this Zuko area and the surrounding forest areas, uh, we encounter three types of forest. One is the subtropical evergreen forest, where there are a number of uh, important trees like uh, Phoebe Henesiana, which is the state tree of Manipur. And we have uh, machilas, we have rhododendrons of the different uh, species. Uh, we have cinnamomum, we have elysium, we have uh, medicinal plants like uh, Paris polyphyla, which is so expensive. When you take it to the international market, it could fetch us even 10,000 rupees per kilo also. And uh, surrounding areas like uh, Zuko, uh, Zuko Valley area, there is a rich uh, biodiversity like uh, smaller plants. Uh, Lilium maclini, of course, that is the main uh, flower. And along with it, uh, uh, Econitum nagaram, which is also endemic to the region, Thalictrum, medicinal plants, uh, Valeriana, which is uh, aromatic uh, yielding plants, Polygonatum, Satyaram. Like that, there are so many, many numbers of uh, important plants which is existing there. And uh, nearby area, the Mount Isu area is the temperate uh, type of forest where different kinds of uh, trees like uh, Texas Becata, which is used for curing of cancer, rhododendrons, junipers, or Quakers, right. Mahonias, so, right. so forth. There are so many plant species, because of that, the area becomes very important. And uh, altogether, about uh, 333 species that has been recorded by uh, Mr. A. A. Mao and uh, Mr. Gogoi, and that was published by the Botanical Survey of India. That is why Zuko area becomes uh, very, very important. And because no of the recent uh, fire which happened recently, yeah. that has uh, really uh, destroyed the area in a very large extent. Absolutely. We'll elaborate on that. Uh, Mr. Mr. Uh, Dr. Loko Pony has given a very wide canvas. He has said that 333 species recorded and published by the Botanical Survey of India, which is a, not a small matter. This is indeed a very big biodiversity hotspot, not just in Northeast, not just in India, but perhaps in the world. Uh, I'll have to go for a break, but before that, let me go to Professor P. Kumar Singh, and then I'll come back once again to Mr. Mr. Medo Yoka in Kohima. Uh, doc, professor P. Kumar Singh is professor in the life science department. Uh, as, as a scientist, uh, Professor Kumar Singh, uh, what thoughts cross your mind when you think about the fire which continued for 15 days? How long it may take for the forest to regenerate? <coughs> Very very interesting uh, uh, question. Very interesting question. People are uh, trying to know this idea. But uh, thank you very much for this uh, interesting question. Uh, it is a matter of fact that since the record by A. 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 Mao uh, published in the uh, Indian Forester, 2006, uh, 2006 forest fire, and then uh, it is annual rhythm. Annually, uh, it is serious or very uh, uh, restricted in some areas, even though the forest fire is continuing. Since 2006, record is there. 
and they even in 2000, uh, 16, 17, 18, 19, and then 2021. 20, it is a real fact. But the real plants, that Mr. Pune, uh, Dr. Pune also mentioned, so many real plants, endangered plants are there because of the hot spot in eastern Himalaya. It continues up to the Juko and the Shiroi, uh, Shiroi Hill. The area which is very much suited for so many uh, indigenous and endemic flora. Yeah. However, because of the flower, the regeneration, it will take time. Okay. Uh, the Re plant cannot be lost, plant cannot be extinct, but uh, the regeneration, it will take uh, a longer period of about, after uh, the monsoon comes in the March, April, and then uh, the, it continue, uh, the, after rain, it will regenerate, and it will take one year. Absolutely. So, hindrance is there we in will, the, we will, uh, because of the fire, right. and uh, it will take one year or so. At least it will take one year for the plants to regenerate. Uh, some comfort there, but uh, not really because we would not like this kind of an incident to happen. I'll go for a break. When I come back, I'll go straight to Kohima to Dr. Mr. Medo Yoka, the advisor to Nagaland Chief Minister, Mr. Nefurio. Don't go away. I'll be right back. Welcome back. Uh, Mr. Medo Yoka, you know, now the simple question which everybody wants to know, uh, this is, these are not political issues. These are issues concerning a people, concerning a race, concerning a region. Uh, you know, now, how can you save the scenic Zuko Valley? That's what the people in the Northeast would like to know. How can the governments save the scenic Zuko Valley in collaboration with the people in the area. Yes, uh, taking into consideration the geological settings and the topographic setting of the valley, the nature and the endowment of Gold Mayalty is wonderful. I would like to put on record an electoral request, uh, suggest that uh, the best way to save and uphold the scenic beauty of the valley is to keep it intact in its natural form. Whatever development activities, infrastructural facilities have been uh, carried out and have been implanted in the valley, the basic things like uh, the heliport as well as the dormitory, I think these are all being carried out, taking into consideration uh, maintaining the ecological balance, the topographic balance, uh, the ecosystem of the valley. These are meant to facilitate uh, uh, the trekkers and the visitors into the valley. I would like to suggest that uh, no more physical development, development, developmental work should be further projected into the valley, and that's the best way out, so that we maintain and uphold the aesthetic beauties and values, the rich uh, assets that is being presented and out in the valley. Thank you. No, Mr. Mr. Yoka. Uh, you know, when the forest fire started on 29th of December, uh, there were some unconfirmed media reports, unconfirmed media reports in some, you know, uh, portals and so on. We said that, you know, some trekkers were visiting from outside the Northeast and, you know, they somehow, you know, knowingly or unknowingly, uh, they must have triggered the fire for some reason. Uh, is there any authenticity in this? Have you been able to find out the cause of the fire this time? Yes, uh, we have some uh, video footage, photo, photo footage also. Uh, it's a bit in, uh, 
immature to to make a statement, concrete statement, because uh, our purpose is to identify uh, the perpetrators or, of the people who have uh, set up the fire in the valley. So the Southern Agami Youth Organization have already filed an FIR and then, uh, investigation is on. So hopefully we'll be able to track down the people who have set the fire in the valley. Okay, that is the big story coming from Nagaland. That is uh, Mr. Medo Yoko saying that a Southern Angami youth organization uh, has already filed an FIR and that a police investigation is on and that some kind of evidence, even if it is preliminary, is already there with the authorities, some kind of photographic evidence and video footage. Uh, we would expect uh, the authorities in Nagaland to come to, the, uh, to reach the bottom of the matter. Uh, before once again going to uh, Imphal, uh, Mr. Mr. Johnny Rongmei, uh, you know, is it uh, necessary to set up a permanent base camp is it a good idea? Uh, and what do you think training villagers, because you have heard the Manipur chief minister, I was asking him the question, whether it is a good idea to train local villagers in firefighting uh, and measures, you know, so that, you know, if something happens like that, they can well be the first responders. Uh, as an expert, what do you think? Yeah, with regard to the uh, training of the local volunteers. That is very, very imperative. And the government of Nagaland, under the leadership of our Honorable Chief Minister, had already convened a meeting uh, regarding this with all the stakeholders, including uh, our Honorable Advisor Medo was also there during the meeting. And it was decided that, you know, the local volunteers, the villagers, youth surrounding the Joku Valley, uh, would be trained on firefighting skills, plus uh, the basic equipments will be provided to them because they are the first responder to yes. the incident. Yes. And also, as a backdrop, we would be also training the uh, State Disaster Response Force, Home Guard and Civil Defense personnel, the police, uh, into all these uh, firefighting skills uh, so that, you know, in the future, we would be able to control the fire uh, in a speedily manner and uh, that could uh, really control the damage, yeah. Right, uh, viewers, uh, let me tell you that Northeast Live is the only channel that sent its reporters to ground zero. Uh, you know, our reporters took a lot of trouble. Sarah Konyak uh, in Kohim, from Kohima and Gautam Sharma from Imphal, along with the camera persons, uh, they drove and trekked uh, several times in during the crisis, during the fortnight-long crisis, and you know we were absolutely uh, you know traumatized like everybody else to see the extent of the damage uh, in that area. Uh, now, now David Solo, I'm coming back to you, Dr. Loko Pony, uh, Puni, and Professor Kumar in a short while. But uh, Mr. Mr. David Solo, uh, you know the the local villagers. Apart from the government author of authorities, the NDRF, the SDRF, and the Indian Air Force, the local villagers also put everything they had, you know, to go there and control the fire. So th that there's a great attachment of the local people to the J Juko Valley. Uh, by the way, uh, Viswama is a place personally very relevant and dear to me because that is where I had first gone to school. By the way, uh, David, uh, tell me, uh, what have you seen when you were trekking in that area? Well, see, the, the trek itself is an extremely scenic one. Um, the first 45 minutes of the trek is uh, fairly tough. But once you hit the peak of the of the in the into the mountains, the trek becomes a very gentle uh, walk into the valley. Right. And um, all over you see a lush green forestry and uh, a sparkling crystal clear waters. So you know the the trek itself is a fairly easy one. It's not a difficult trek, and that is why it's so much uh, so popular because um, you know you don't have to be a mountaineer or an extremely fit person to visit Zuku. Any normal, you know, relatively fit person can do it in one day. Uh, but we advise that you stay overnight because, you know, the, 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 the night sky in the valley is extremely stunning. 
So, um, and you see, the thing with, uh, with trekkers, uh, uh, over the years, we've had uh, a, a massive increase of trekkers into the valley. And, uh, the, you know, we as two operators and we as um, uh, responsible uh, uh, people in this industry, we always advise all uh, trekkers to take a local guide with them. You know, we feel that uh, apart from giving uh, some sort of, a, you know, review, revenue generation for the village youth, it also ensures that, you know, local customs are respected. Right. Um, you know, trekking right. is done in a safe and responsible manner. So, uh, yes, uh, I think uh, to your earlier question of, uh, of um, what we should be doing, I think we should also be training uh, the local youth in the surrounding villages, uh, you know, and have them to be uh, tour, uh, guide leaders, leaders who take uh, the responsible way of, of trekking and Absolutely. You know, ensure that Absolutely. Yeah, all the trekking is done safely. And, and that's, a, that's a very important point, uh, uh, which uh, uh, David Solo is also agreeing that local youths should be trained uh, so that they can respond. That is what was uh, also stated by Mr. Uh, Zoni Rongme. Uh, let me go to you, uh, Dr. Loko Puni. Uh, you know, you have you have you have come up with a very fantastic. I mean, I mean it obviously means uh, obviously uh, means that you have all the facts in your fingertips. Uh, 333 species. Uh, in a scenic, mesmerizing place is not a matter of joke. Uh, now, are you going to form a team? Are you going to form a team of experts from your department and including others and make a detailed assessment of the damage this time? What are your plans now? Yes, thank you. Uh, our state government, headed by our chief secretary, we have uh, formed a committee and uh, we are going to look after the uh, effect of the fire and uh, assess the damage wh had that has been caused. So the forest department will be responsible for submission of the detailed report to the government so that the government may take uh, necessary actions in the days to come. And uh, we really need to strengthen the, and intensify the works that we are doing. The government of India under the uh, forest fire prevention and management, uh, we have uh, plans and schemes like uh, creating a lot of awareness and training workshops, uh, fire watchers uh, payment, uh, control burning, and equip purchase of equipment, uh, field vehicles, etc. So we are really going to intensify. And we, at the forest department level, we have got a nodal officer who take care of the forest fire and coordinate okay. with the villagers, at, uh, the deer force and the villagers. So uh, we, the forest department and the governor of Manipur, we really have a team and uh, we will be discussing and reviewing the, reviewing the situation and uh, that we ne really need to have uh, intensified. And for that matter, we have uh, annual plan operation for fire management. So we submit uh, to the government of India how to tackle and how to prevent the fire. So okay. we no, really need no. to... Uh, now, busy revisit on this uh, aspect again. Absolutely. Uh, that, that is what uh, Dr. Yeah. Loko Puni, the principal CCF uh, government of Manipur, is saying that the chief secretary level committee, headed by the chief secretary of Manipur, has been set up to assess the damage and take up the matter with the concerned authorities uh, so that, uh, you know, perhaps obviously th these are issues that require a lot of government funding and patronage uh, to save, uh, in, in particularly because these are very, very inaccessible terrain, uh, difficult to handle uh, where there is no much of habitation immediate vicinity. Uh, therefore, a lot of uh, government efforts would also be necessary absolutely to deal with this issue. Uh, Professor Kumar Singh, uh, you know, this has become an annual feature. Uh, are you in favor of a standard operating procedure? Uh, you know, whether it is Manipur, whether it is Nagaland, that is not the issue. Issue is the, to save the Zuku Valley. That is what is the primary concern. So, uh, at the end of the day, uh, you know, uh, the, the natural, whether it is a river and mountains, do not look at, uh, you know, man-made boundaries. Uh, you know, uh, so, what are your, some of your suggestions? Do you think there should be a mechanism in place, laid down procedure? Yes, it is very uh, interesting question. 
uh, I'll submit uh, 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 two, three points only. Uh, the area, Juko Valley, which is very rare and uh, the poor, not only for Manipur state and the Nagaland, it is for our country. Yes. It is here, so many plants are growing. Uh, so it is, first point is, first point is, there are three, three tracks, I mean. Three tracks means subtropical evergreen forest. 1,600 to 1,800. This is the uh, below, below area, evergreen forest. And the next is we have temperate forest. Temperate forest is uh, 2,400 to 2,800. Uh, uh, 2, this is the temperate area where the Juko uh, Valley exists. Juko Valley exists is the temperate area. Right. Uh, 2,450, uh, 38, like that. Here, uh, the, this uh, area is very much interested, but uh, second point is that area where the medicinal plants and the endemic plants are growing here, one species of dwarf bamboo, one species of dwarf bamboo, Sin Arundinaria, uh, Sin Arundinaria species, which is giving so many hindrance to the medicinal plants, even in the, uh, okay. the to the uh, need to need Juko to protect. Lily is the same. Uh, Juko lily is the same. Uh, need to protect. Need but to protect. Absolutely. The alpine area. Absolutely. The alpine alpine area. Yes, sir. Alpine area is the mount issue. Uh, so next is next is to to give. The, training to the youngsters and the coming tourist people so that uh, so that uh, plucking of the plant abrupting of the plant and so to that give hindrance absolutely and, uh, absolutely on the another the, hand they is, have to give idea right, of right. the forest absolutely yes, professor sir. professor very well said their training the training one, is very essentially sir, uh, i love to uh, sorry sir, for the lack point. of time professor i apologize for the lack of time i have to cut you short uh, let me once again go to kohima to uh, mr medo yoka medo yoka final comments from you uh, final comments from you. There is need for a lot of coordination. There is need for assessment. And there is need to take up the matter with the government of India. At the end of the day, you will require a lot of uh, training, a lot of funding, and a lot of expertise to prevent and deal with a situation after a natural disaster of this extent. Mr. Yoka, speak. Mr. Yoka, please speak. Oh, shit. Hello. Yeah. yeah yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. 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 I can hear you. Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. You Your please put off the me. television. If Your final comment. Come back with the question, please. Okay. Question is: It requires. Uh, what is the strategy? How are? What are you planning to do now? The fire has already damaged a large stretch of the area. What are your plans in now in the coming days? How will you regenerate the area? The challenges uh, posed by the recent inferno and the response that have to be made is immense. Here will be definitely be needing uh, uh, expert opinion advisors from all agencies available. And, uh, as the Honorable Chief Minister of Nagaland, Srini Pirio is also uh, seriously contemplating that uh, we have to do something, find out our concrete ways and means so that uh, this pristine valley, Zuko Valley, has been protected and whole. Definitely uh, within a matter of days, month, if not a, a days, month, within a matter of month, uh, the government of Nagaland will be coming up with a concrete plan and a proper roadmap to see that Tsuku Valley is being protected and its values and assets are being uh, preserved for posterity coming in. 
Absolutely. Government of Nagaland coming up with an action plan to protect Juku Valley. Uh, that is coming up soon. That is what Mr. Medo Yokha is saying. Uh, Mr. Mr. Johnny Rongme, uh, from the disaster management point of view, uh, what are the lessons learned? Are you going to plan anything new to prevent similar fires in the future? Because we had seen a fire in 2006. We had seen another one in 2015 and so on. Uh, what are the lessons learned and how do you plan to prevent similar recurrences of bushfires in the days ahead? Yeah, number one, the, from the perspective of disaster management, we always have the slogan that uh, while hoping for the best, we are always prepared for the worst. So uh, with that, uh, uh, some of the lessons what we have learned from the Nagaland side, we are contemplating in making, you know, a, a permanent traditional fire line to uh, prevent the fire coming from the, you know, peripheral to the valley. That's one approach that we would be doing. Uh, another approach that we would be doing would be also to uh, enhance the capacity of human uh, response uh, capabilities. So involving the uh, local youths and also the other personnel. Uh, the third uh, strategy of, uh, the, from the disaster management perspective that the government of Nagaland would be pondering upon is also to uh, find uh, the communication systems uh, you know, established in the uh, valley right. uh, so that we are quickly are able to get you know, alert systems to our uh, stakeholders. So we are also contemplating on the alert systems. Uh, I think the Indian uh, Forest Department uh, Ministry has uh, have the systems. And we are also networking with the ISROs uh, for the satellite uh, right. alert systems. So these are a few things that we would be doing. And from the disaster management perspective, we will be also launching post-disaster damage assessment soon. Our drones mappings are already done. As on 8th of January, um, based on the assessment, uh, approximately around 267 acres of uh, 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 area has been burned. But we will still further assess to right. uh, come up to the okay. exact uh, right. area of damage, extent of damage right. that we would be conducting. It's called post-disaster damage right. assessment. Yeah. Prelim Thank you. Preliminary estimate uh, on the Nagaland side is 267 acres of grasslands or forest lands damaged in this fire. That is what Mr. Johnny Rongme, OSD in the NSDMA, is saying. That is uh, also, we need to put out those figures, 267 acres. Preliminary estimate, of course, these figures might change. Uh, final comments, uh, uh, David Solo, 20 seconds, your last comments. 20 seconds to you. Uh, so we, uh, we are also working very closely with the Department of Tourism in Nagaland. Uh, to do our part in in, in in this fire in this fire tragedy, right. and also uh, try to work on how to um, uh, keep the you know, how to uh, in future what is to be done in future, uh, what policies are to be, uh, to be in, implemented, uh, what guidelines should be be, yeah, should yeah. be implemented for absolutely tourists. all these we are working with the department to bring out some fresh guidelines and fresh do's and don'ts for tourists and for trekkers, which we will be handing over to the, to the department. And hopefully these uh, recommendations will be taken for future visitors to the valley so that, uh, you know, the valley is kept in a pristine state. So Absolutely, that think, Valley, that, yeah, that uh, is what we all want, the, the, the pristine Zuko Valley, a perched at an altitude of 2,400 meters or 8,000 feet roughly above the mean sea level. It's a biodiversity hotspot, one and only objective of everyone, whether the government or the local population and the government of India should be how to protect and keep 
this picturesque valley for the future generations to enjoy. That should be the only motto. And that is the reason why we did this discussion. This is not the end of last word heard on this valley. Of course, we will keep on discussing the issue. Of course, we don't want similar fires in the future. I'd like to thank all the participants, uh, Chief Minister Biren Singh, and all the participants for uh, being on this discussion tonight in public interest. And of course, the viewers for watching this show. Good night and goodbye.